There's a lot going on under the hood when we interact with Windows. It may look like we can point and click and open up applications and software, but there are a plethora of background tasks and more specifically, processes that make all of this work. In this lab, we're going to learn how to view and manage running processes using the task manager and understand the significance of processes in the operating system. So let's jump in by right-clicking the taskbar and then selecting task manager at the bottom. Once it's open, select the more details arrow in the bottom left, and now we can see a lot more action going on under the hood. This main tab that we're on right now, the processes tab, just displays a list of all running processes along with their respective CPU, memory, and disk usage. This area can be great for troubleshooting why a machine might be running slowly, or maybe even an indicator that a process is running on our machine that shouldn't be. And some of these processes have a little greater than symbol just on the left hand side of the process name. We can select that and expand it to get more details about that specific process. When we expand it, we might get additional details like sub processes, services, or threads that might be associated with that main process. For example, if we had a web browser open like Chrome or Firefox, if we were to expand it, we would see additional processes based on the number of tabs and other activity happening inside of that browser. We can also gain some insight by sorting. If we select the CPU column or memory or status or name, they can all organize and sort the listing of processes based on a particular matter, perhaps like most CPU consumption, most memory consumption, or just alphabetical by selecting the process name. If we want even more insight, we can use the details tab. This tab provides more context about the process, such as the process ID or the PID, and that's a really important number to know when troubleshooting or investigating. We also have the username here as well to see which user account is associated as the owner for that given process. And the details tab is great, but that's why just the processes tab exists for simple interactions, such as ending a task. If we just want to hop inside of here, we can right click and end a task, such as the task manager itself, and it will terminate the process. Okay, cool, let's go and open up the task manager again, but this time let's inspect another tab and we're going to look at the performance tab. So we'll select more details again in the bottom left and then select performance tab at the top. This tab is great to get a graphical representation of CPU, memory, disk, and network usage of the system. This doesn't really break things down by resource usage by process, but it can give us a good visual overall indicator for how the system is performing and the general usage across our machine. And just like how the details tab provides more insight and processes, we could get more insight on the performance by selecting the resource monitor just at the bottom of this window now. The resource monitor allows us to monitor in real time. And it's really good because it actually provides system resource usage and consumption of running processes. It's kind of like throwing the process and details and performance tab all inside of one. So we can get a line by line consumption list of what each process and PID and name are all doing with all the total amount of resources that they require or might be trying to acquire. Let's go now and investigate process relationships to services in the details tab. If we would like to identify which service is associated with the process, we can go ahead and right click an individual process name and then we can select to go to services. And this will take us directly to the service that supports the process. So let's do that for the task manager process. And you're going to notice something a little interesting here. There's no actual service associated with the task manager. And there's actually a really good reason for that is because the task manager is not configured to run without a user initiating the process. However, if we were to go take a look at something like SSHD, that would be entirely different. The running process has to accept SSH connections. So therefore there has to be a service that provides additional support for that type of process. And we can see that here as the open SSH SSH server for the SSHD process. Cool. But what's the point of all of that? Well, the point really is to get a bit of a sense or an idea of what the landscape of a normal Windows operating system looks like. If we can identify what are typical or normal processes and what are typical or normal services associated with them, well, then we've established normal. That's our baseline. And if something jumps out, Let's just say we had SSH DXY service running for an SSH D2 process. 
that's not normal. <laughs> and, and that indicates a problem. And that could be very likely a cybersecurity problem. And that's why it's good to know what is what, what is normal, so we can identify what is not normal. And then finally, we have the users tab. And in this tab, we can see which users initiated which process. This can give us some really good information as to how a process is running and with what level of permissions. So as we can see here, the administrator user, that's us, is running this list of processes and it's consuming about 20% of the memory at this given point in time. Awesome, so there's a lot going on under the hood, isn't there? And in this lab, you've learned how to view and manage running processes using the task manager so that you can gain insights into system performance and resource usage. This is a really important skill. And as you advance and level up in your IT and cybersecurity skill set, you're going to come to process inspection time and time again.